soda can is made. Have you ever wondered how those shiny cylindrical aluminum cans that hold your favorite fizzy drinks are made? Well, in this video, we'll take a look at soda can production. But before we dive in, let me ask you a question. Did you know that Americans use over 100 billion aluminum cans every year? Amazing, isn't it? Let's find out what goes into making these ubiquitous containers. Chapter 1. The Aluminum Can in History Aluminum cans have become a global phenomenon, with billions produced and consumed every year. They're the go-to packaging for soft drinks, beer, and even some trendy canned cocktails. But how did this humble container become so popular? It all started with a simple idea and a revolutionary material. The story of the aluminum can dates back to 1959 when Coors Brewing Company introduced the first all-aluminum can. Prior to this, drinks were packaged in steel cans or glass bottles. The aluminum can quickly gained popularity due to its lightweight nature, resistance to corrosion, and ability to chill faster than other materials. But did you know that the aluminum we can use today is quite different from its 1959 ancestor? The first aluminum cans weighed about 85 grams, while today's cans weigh a mere 14.9 grams. That's an 82% reduction in weight. This evolution has not only made cans more cost-effective to produce and transport, but also significantly reduced their environmental impact. Aluminum cans are infinitely recyclable. Unlike plastic, aluminum never loses its quality no matter how many times it's melted down and reused. In fact, a recycled aluminum can could be back on the store shelf as a new can in as little as 60 days. Now that's what I call a circular economy. Chapter two, the aluminum's journey. Aluminum, the star of our show, has a fascinating journey of its own. It starts its life as bauxite ore, typically mined in countries like Australia, China, and Brazil. This ore then undergoes a complex refining process called the Bayer process to extract alumina, which is further processed into pure aluminum through electrolysis. But here's a surprising twist. Despite aluminum being the third most abundant element in the Earth's crust after oxygen and silicon, it was once more valuable than gold. In the 1800s, aluminum was so rare and expensive that Napoleon III, the emperor of France, reserved aluminum cutlery for his most honored guests, while the rest had to make do with gold utensils. How the tables have turned. Today, thanks to modern production methods, aluminum is abundant and relatively inexpensive. A single roll of aluminum sheeting used in can production can weigh up to 10 tons and is long enough to make an astonishing 750,000 cans. That's enough for every person in a mid-sized city to have their own can. Chapter three, the manufacturing magic. Now, let's dive into the details of how soda cans are made. It's a process that combines precision engineering cutting-edge technology, and a dash of magic. The journey begins with that massive roll of aluminum sheeting we mentioned earlier. This sheet, barely thicker than a human hair, is fed into a machine called a cupper. The copper performs two crucial operations. It punches out circular disks from the sheet and then forms these disks into shallow cups. It's like making miniature aluminum bowls at lightning speed. Next, these cups enter the star of our show, the body maker. This impressive machine stretches and shapes the cup into the familiar can shape we all know and love. It's a delicate process. The aluminum is stretched so thin that if it were scaled up to the size of a football field, it would be no thicker than a human hair. But we're not done yet. The newly formed cans then go through a trimmer, which ensures each can is exactly the right height. Any excess aluminum is trimmed off and recycled. Did you know that this trimmed aluminum, along with the leftover sheet from the cupper, accounts for about 25% of the original aluminum sheet? That's why efficient recycling is so crucial in can production. After trimming, the cans take a refreshing bath. They're washed in a series of chemical baths to clean them and prepare their surface for printing. The first washes use a dilute acid solution to remove any oils or residues, while the later washes use deionized water to rinse the cans clean. Once squeaky clean, the cans are ready for their glamour shot. They zoom through a high-speed printer that can apply up to seven colors in the blink of an eye. This printer is so precise that it can print 1,800 cans per minute. 
That's 30 cans every second. The newly decorated cans then dash through an oven to dry the ink and protective varnish. But a soda can isn't just pretty on the outside. The inside of the can needs special attention too. A spray machine coats the inside of each can with a fine mist of epoxy lacquer. This coating prevents the drink from coming into direct contact with the aluminum, preserving the taste and preventing the can from corroding. Without this coating, your favorite soda might end up tasting more like metal than the refreshing drink you were expecting. The final steps involve shaping the top of the can. A series of machines gradually form the neck and flange of the can. That's the part where the lid will eventually be attached. This process is done in multiple stages to avoid tearing the thin aluminum. Before the cans leave the factory, they go through a rigorous inspection process. High-speed cameras check every can inside and out, rejecting any that don't meet the exacting standards. Even a tiny speck of dust or a slight dent is enough to send a can to the recycling bin. And there you have it. From a massive sheet of aluminum to a perfectly formed, beautifully decorated can, ready to be filled with your favorite fizzy drink. The entire process from start to finish takes only about an hour. In that time, a single production line can produce up to 2,500 cans per minute. That's a whopping 3.6 million cans per day. Chapter four. Conclusion. So the next time you crack open a cold can of your favorite soda, take a moment to appreciate the incredible journey it's been on. From bauxite ore dug from the earth to the high-tech factory floor, every can tells a story of innovation, efficiency, and the endless recyclability of aluminum. And don't forget to recycle that can when you're done. It could be back on the shelf as a new can before you know it. If you found this video fascinating, don't forget to like and subscribe for more behind the scenes looks at the everyday items we often take for granted.